Stop jet washing your bike. Pro Mechanics Jet Wash Bikes, and we've recommended that you jet wash your bike on many videos on this channel. However, here is the thing. You really shouldn't. And we've changed our minds about this because jet washing will destroy your bike and bearings. I will explain why this is the case, why we've changed our minds thanks to new science and information and what you should do instead. So jet washing, why is it bad? Well, the main reason is because it allows water and dirt to get inside the bearings on your bike. Now, for those who are unaware, the bearings are components that go on any part of your bike that needs to rotate. So you have them in the bottom bracket here, they are in the wheels, they're in the jockey wheels, but also in the headset that allow your handlebars to turn. And they look something like this. So this is a headset bearing. Um, this is a bottom bracket bearing, it's a bit smaller. Uh, and this is a wheel bearing. Now within these bearings, if I pop the seal off, you'll be able to see what's inside. So inside here are a load of balls or little spheres of either steel or on fancier bearings, they're ceramic balls. Uh, then you have a cage that holds those balls uh, in place. And then surrounding that is a load of grease for lubrication. Now the problem with jet washing is that the pressure of the water is sufficient that it can get past the seal on the outside and then into the bearing where the balls and the grease are. In the past, some people thought that seals offered sufficient protection from jet washing. Sai made a, a quite famous video on this channel about it where he jet washed the life out of a bearing at real close range and thought it was okay because the grease was still in there. And I've done it as well. I've made videos where I've said you should jet wash your bikes, it's fine. And this was mainly done because pro mechanics do it all the time. Now, the reason that we now know this is not the case is because it's been studied and investigated by engineers at ceramic speed who have shown me their results. And what they found is that it's actually quite easy for a jet washer to overcome uh, the seals on a bearing and for water to permeate through. And once water gets in to the bearing, it causes a number of problems and it's quite hard for it to come out. So the engineers told me that the first thing you need to be aware of is that the water, once it gets in there, it doesn't just dilute the grease, it can change the chemistry of it, which as a former chemist, I found really interesting. Um, so grease is actually a mixture of different things. It's not, it's not just like oil, um, it's not just one thing. Uh, there's additives in there, there's a thickener component, there's low friction additives that are put in. And when you have water inside the bearing, it breaks down that thickener, so the grease doesn't work as it should. Uh, it can also sort of chemically react with the additives, sort of nullifying them. And so what you can then have is, is sort of an acidic sludge inside your bearing, which actually accelerates corrosion and wear rather than reducing friction. And the other simple thing that can happen is you can just wash grease out of a bearing as well. And this just creates more friction inside the bearing because you have sort of you know, metal on metal, like the ball on the cartridge, just making contact and just grinding away. The other way that corrosion can occur is, say when you've washed your bike with a jet wash and then you bring it inside, you've sort of dried it on the surface and then you leave it in, in your house. As you're no longer riding it, it allows any water that's in those bearings to, to pool, usually at the bottom. And then you have a situation where there's a little sort of drop of water in the bottom of the bearing and you've got air, you've got moisture, and you've got steel. And that equals rust. And so you get a small little spot of corrosion occurring, uh, perhaps on one of the balls or perhaps on the actual uh, bearing cartridge itself. And so when you next then ride your bike, you've got a little bit of a little pit of corrosion there. And then because now the bearing is no longer even, that creates wear throughout the rest of the bearing. This is something that we can actually show you with microscopic cameras that they've got at Ceramic Speeds HQ. So this is a bearing which has been on a bike which was jet washed once. You can see with this fancy microscopic camera, the pitting it has caused. 
So just to reiterate, this pitting makes the bearing uneven and will cause it to wear quicker, reducing its life and costing you money. The other big thing is, is it reduces the performance of the bearing. Not everyone's bothered about this, but I am, and a lot of you are as well. And if you're performance minded, then you want to ensure that your bearings perform at their optimum level. Also, you might have spent a lot of money on your bottom bracket and have a fancy one like the one I've got, and in which case, you want to take care of it. So why do pro mechanics do it? And what should I do instead? Both excellent questions. Well, firstly, pro mechanics need to clean a lot of bikes quickly every day at a race. And it's imperative that they look really clean and shiny on TV for the sponsors. And jet washing is super quick. The other reason is that if their bearings do wear out because they've been jet washing them twice a day for three weeks, then they can just easily change them. They have all the equipment and the skills to do it very fast. And they also get provided bearings by their sponsors. Anecdotally, I've heard from mechanics that during a three week race, such as the Giro d'Italia or the Tour de France, it's not uncommon for them to go through three sets of headset bearings on a bike and also have to change the bottom bracket as well. And that is due to jet washing. It's pretty crazy. Those components should last far longer than that. And if it was on your bike, you'd want them to last far longer. But wait! I'm not an idiot. I know what some of you are saying. I don't directly jet wash onto my bearings. I wash next to them. Surely that's fine to still use a jet wash. Well, apparently not. Uh, I asked this question to the uh, engineers uh, at Ceramic Speed and they said that they've tested it and directly, well, indirect jet washing still causes water ingress because these things are so powerful um, and they create such microscopic droplets of water that even sort of water ricocheting off the adjacent areas can still permeate through, um, such is the power of these things. It's very difficult to avoid doing it. The best solution is just to not to do it at all. Another issue is that jet washing can cause dirt that's on the surface of your bike to actually be carried in the water and then into the bearing. So you can put dirt inside the bearing, which then creates further wear as the bearing moves as well. Instead, when you clean your bike, I'd recommend you do the following. I'm, I'm first going to take off my Wahoo and my Topeak saddle bag because I don't want those to get wet and damaged. First, perform a pre-wash with just a normal hose like this that's not high pressure. This is just to remove surface dirt so you don't rub that into the frame. Next, use a brake and drivetrain cleaner like this and spray it on your brakes and drivetrain. And then I like to use a, a brush as well to just help agitate it and help loosen that dirt and grease that might be on there. The next step, I'd recommend you do a contact wash and the best tool for this is a nice soft mitt like this. These are really good at uh, getting into all the nooks and crannies and the microfiber also lifts dirt off the bike. Don't use harsh brushes like people might have recommended to you in the past. The harsh brushes will scratch the lacquer on your bike and mar your paint. These, uh, you can pick them up pretty cheap um, and I'm gonna do that with some bike shampoo in a bucket. then just rinse all that off. You see all the dirt just falls, falls off pretty easy now. The next step's optional, but if you want to add some added protection to your bike and make it very hydrophobic on the surface, you can use something like this uh, graphene spray wax and waterless wash, which I've just put on there. Um, but then the last step, which is really important, is drying. So in order to dry your bike, you see the pro mechanics using compressed air. Now, I actually asked if this was a problem and this damaged your bike, and the engineers told me apparently not. That is safe to do, and it's particularly effective at drying chains. So if you have compressed air, 
that's great, it makes drying very easy. Um, however, if you don't, using a good old towel and just drying it down and just paying close attention to areas uh, such as the top of the headset where you can have water uh, staying there and also things like seat pin bolts, uh, be aware of that and around the bearings and then putting it in a dry place uh, as well. So don't leave it in a damp cellar, for example. If you have a dehumidifier, that can help too. Right, I hope you found this useful. Um, I've changed my mind, and that's the beauty of science and increased understanding. As new evidence emerges, you can change your mind. And that's exactly what I've done. I used to jet wash my bikes for years. I don't do it anymore. Right, I'm gonna go now. Love you, bye.